All right, we're back. Comprehension time, part two with Joshua Boo Boo. We are here um, reading about the kite. All right, question number four. Explain line nine, but will he breathe a word to me? Nine, 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 nine. Well, that's after eight. So he was wondering. Now, after he has asked all these questions, all these things he would like to ask the kite, or he's wondering about, we spoke about what can my kite see if the birds are friends with the kite, or the clouds just really rain. And then he went on, he said, he must know a thousand things as much as schoolmasters and kings. Then he says, but will he breathe a word to me? No, he's as quiet as quiet can be. <coughs> So when he's saying, will he breathe a word to me? Is a kite something that's living that can talk to us, Joshua? No, please. No, but the kite is not breathing. The kite does not have a heart here like Auntie. And bu -bu 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 -bu. Especially when you see Auntie getting excited about Joshua's reading. And he has a bu -bu 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 bu 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 You know, like grabbing the drum just now, right? bu 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 Yeah, the kite doesn't have that. So he can use his imagination and he can think about all these things the kite is experiencing. But at the end of the day, the kite is not able to speak to him, to say anything to him. But number five is just what we were talking about, you know. Why would the kite be able to see more than the poet? Why would the kite be able to see more than you and I, Joshua? Because it's high up in the air. Brilliant, because it's high up in the air. So, Auntie and Joshua, we hear down on the ground, so we could only look around, see what is this side, that side, in front and behind, and we could look up. When we look up, we could see birds. We, what are some of the things we will be seeing when we look up, and Joshua? Yes. Planes. You see, brilliant boy, Joshua, we'll be saying planes. We will see birds. We could see like probably fruits to the top of the trees. We will see the clouds. Yeah. Things like that. We would be seeing, right? But um the kite no, the kite is high up there. So when the kite is looking down, the kite could see Joshua and Auntie there down on the ground. You must look like tiny little specks of dust. But the kite is so high, right? He could probably see a little cow. It looked tiny to him. The cow, the sheep, all the different things. There. What? Tell me some of the things the kite will be seeing now. When the kite look down, what are some things that the kite will be seeing? A house. A house. Good boy. Excellent. Give me a few more. A car. A car. Uh huh. A boat. Mm hmm. We'll be seeing different things in different areas, right? Yeah. We'll be seeing a lot of different things that he could look on. He could see the airport, right, Joshua? He could see the beach. He could see the supermarket. He could see the different stores. Oh, yeah. He can see the hospital. All the different places and all the different parishes. He can see you use your imagination, too. Not just your imagination. You use your mind. I think it through. Think about all the different things here. Yeah. He can see the bus. He can see Joshua and Auntie there at the bus stop. They say, when the bus gonna come? When the bus gonna come? The bus break down? Yeah. He can, look, he can see the men working on the road that they're taking so long to fix up by Auntie. A lot of things. Yeah. He can see the fishermen getting ready to get in the boats. So many things. The farmer out working the ground taking care of the animals. All right, so the kite will be able to see more because the kite is high up. So when he looks, he can see a wider area, a lot of different things down there. Okay, from what does the poet think that rain comes? Remember when he said he wants to know if um, this is something that's just really rain, what he was talking about?
Look at the line that's on the line number four. When he was saying something, it's just really rain. Read that line there for me. And are the clothes just mm -hmm. really rain? Just really rain. So he was talking about clothes, right? Yeah. You know where we get rain from, Joshua? From the ocean. From the ocean, look a smart boy, Joshua. Joshua is a scientist, you know, Joshua loves his science, so that's why I asked him that. So next time we come, we can talk. You want that we chat about this one, is this Joshua, like different things um, with the weather and so on, like rain and different things, so? Okay. Yeah, maybe next time, because we haven't had like our little chat. Yeah, so let me just have like a little five, ten minutes after. We got getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Oh, yeah. Auntie shares things about herself and Joshua shares about himself. So Auntie knows Joshua's into his science. Once again, it's another way to build confidence in these children. Give them space to be able to express themselves and share about the things they are passionate about. Okay? So Joshua's my science boy. So whenever possible, Joshua must have the stage to come and parade here and show Auntie all he knows in his science. So we're going to talk about rain and snow and different things next time. What mood is conveyed in the last line of the poem? Remember when we are talking about the mood, we're talking about how the poem makes us feel. Right? Read that last line there for me, Joshua. The one at the end. Good boy, but will he breathe a word to me? No, he's as quiet as quiet can be. So when I read that last line, no, he's as quiet as quiet can be. Remember if the question says, what mood is conveyed? Convey just mean um, like express, like to show, demonstrate, you know? Um... When we read that line, how does it make us feel? Does it make us feel happy, peaceful, angry, scared, um, annoyed? Tell me how you feel when you hear that last line, when you read that last line, Joshua. No, he's as quiet as quiet can be. How that makes you feel? Silence. It makes you feel? Quiet. Quiet, yeah. Makes you feel calm. Like, auntie will just lay down here and go to sleep. Yeah. You know? He's as quiet as quiet can be. Peaceful. Calm. Quiet. These are different words that we could use. Relaxed. Yeah. Like, picture yourself in the spa. Which I'll say again. I'm long overdue for day at the spa, yeah. And our last question did you enjoy the poem give one reason for your answer did you enjoy that poem joshua i got the drum did you enjoy that yes please tell auntie why you enjoyed that poem because i get to learn new words he get to learn new words i was not expecting joshua to tell me that you see the level you see joshua's thinking i tell you joshua's a boy who's very willing to learn so since you told me that give me like about three new words that you learn in this poem joshua let's show off on everybody tell me some words that you learn schoolmaster mm -hmm. schoolmaster mm-hmm Wonder. Wonder. Uh huh. Breathe. 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 Yeah. You learn a lot of words, Joshua. Excellent. Auntie's very proud of you. Good job. Yeah. Let me know if you learn some new words too. You see, it's always good to be able to, um, 
as I keep saying, improve your vocabulary. And how do we improve our vocabulary? By reading. Yeah. That's how we learn to say things. You know, we know what we want to say, but so many different ways of saying the same thing. So I use the example of knowledgeable, a very big word, but it basically just means you know a lot about a lot of different things. Or you can actually know a lot about one particular thing. Like I said, Joshua's into science. Joshua's very knowledgeable about science. And he's a girl. In case you never know his auntie is uh, very much into English reading and writing and being creative in that way. And he knows a lot about that. I had my sweet Mary Bear came for lessons on Saturday. Mary Bear is very knowledgeable about music. Mary Bear has an excellent ear for music. Yeah, he does. That's his gift. Mm -hmm. So, I'm so happy with my Joshua and his comprehension today. Even sometimes the actual questions, you can learn new words in them as well. We have the word conveyed, right? That's not a word we hear all the time. That was a new word that we learned. So I'm just happy. And then when they ask us about the mood, in a way that actually made me convey, let me use back the word, different ways of saying like quiet, right? Joshua said it made him feel quiet. And he said calm, peaceful, soothing, relaxing. You see, all those things, they're similar to quiet or you give, give you that kind of feeling, peaceful, you know? Yeah. So this was a great comprehension, a great exercise. So Joshua, you told me that you like this poem a lot. So you want to do some more of these, like comprehensions with poems in between, right, Joshua? Yeah, I think so. That's a great idea. All right, so I'm going to stop this video now and we're going to move on. Lessons moving so sweet. Lessons just flowing today. We're going to be doing some maths. We're going to be looking at odd numbers. Before that, I'm going to feed this licorice cat. The licorice cat. Dinner time is 6 p.m. If when I hear that auntie get attacked by a licorice cat, send help, right? Listen, no joke. Send help. <laughs> All right, maths coming up.